Hello my friends, so as promised I'm going to make a video about uh, what is this. Some of you sent me emails and messages saying that uh, this was Amber for making the um, Columbia BC Amber wheel, the famous Columbia uh, amplifier Amber wheel, but no. This is um, this is a resin uh, called Colophony, and uh, it's the same thing as as the amber, but uh, ten million years younger. Uh, on top of that, if you have a piece of amber this size, that means that you have in your hand maybe, depending on the purity between 2,000 and 3,000 euros or dollars, okay? So that means that uh, if you put all this together, you have like 10 to 15,000 dollars on top of your table. And this, all this all together costs less than, less than a dollar, okay? It's very easy to find. And it's used in the, if you if you uh, make it powder, it's used on the violins, on the um, on the bow of the violins. Okay. So, what is all this about? This is all about um, the wax cylinders for the Gillette phonograph. So Gillette designed a cylinder that is way bigger than the standard one. So you have almost three inches wide by around if I correct it should be like six inches long six or seven inches long I don't see here the measure but about that okay you can see one here okay so it's huge so Gillette on his book He said that uh, he used, let me read it for you. What is wanted is a hard film, film wax, which is capable of taking a clean cut, the waste material coming away in a kind of powder. I have tried uh, various compositions of wax, but the best I have found for this purpose is white wax. Even the ordinary composite candles melted down take, the, take and repeat sounds, and sounds like those from a bugle are repeated fairly well with this, with this composition, but for spoken word songs it is not at all satisfactory. The white was I have just mentioned as being the most satisfactory for the purpose is sold as most all shops in the form of thin flat cakes. The price is about three shillings per pound. Okay, so to say that it's uh, wax sold in form of thin flat cakes at most, uh, that is sold at most oil shops is like saying nothing. So I started my investigation and uh, I discovered that uh, there are basically two kind of wax paraffin wax and vegetable wax um, and also wax coal let me, let me find here and this is a small peak of what i will tell you later but i forgot the name page 40 something I think it's steering, steering wax. Okay, so I contacted several wax vendors here in Spain. I found a lady that uh, it looked like she knew what she was talking about, and she told me that there are several paraffin waxes, several qualities. The highest the quality, the harder it is, 
and the higher the melting point is. So my first, first test was to buy paraffin wax that melts at 74 degrees Celsius. And the result is this. This is a broken one, okay? And it is, it is hard, but it's very brittle. Now it's very, very hot here because we have uh, 35 degrees, but you see it, it broke, it, it, it breaks very easily. And uh, you see, it is brittle. It's, it's not hard as, as, uh, as glass, but it's very brittle. So, and I made some tests and uh, it doesn't take uh, the sound very well. It's, it's too soft. You can see, you can, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, dig uh, your, your fingernail uh, here. So it wasn't satisfactory at all. So I started investigating and um, I discovered I discovered one thing. Let's go here. As you know, Gillette published all his um, his uh, blueprints and articles in the English Mechanic. At that time, also, a man called Botone used to answer some of the questions, uh, most of them regarding the electrical motor, because this guy was an, elect an electrician and apart from some articles he used to uh, uh, he used to announce he, he used to sell uh, books uh, uh, electrical books like uh, S. Botone Wellington Surrey supplies the following electrical books and apparatus invaluable to electrical amateurs engineers Electromotors, how made and how used. A handbook for amateurs and practical men. The dynamo, how made and how used. All amateurs should read this book. How to manage the dynamo. Electric bells and all about them. Okay? Plenty of little books. Okay? And he was also an avid... Um, uh, Part, uh, he participates uh, a lot of uh, on the questions and answers of uh, of uh, answering a lot of questions from uh, from uh, other other people. Okay, regarding most of them about dynamos, about motors. So, by the way, if you have time, buy the English Mechanic, whatever year, whatever. It's it's like internet, but one million time better okay you have amazing 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 things amazing experiments and about whatever you, you can imagine it's absolutely fascinating but let's continue so as you know gillette died suddenly on 1894 and uh, one year uh, before, but I have not found the, the, the answer on the book, but uh, it will be on my book. This is, this is um, my book that I'm writing with all the answers, questions and answers, okay? Um, there was a question to Mr. Botone asking about the wax compounds for making um, phonograph cylinders. And... Two numbers after, he answered a very short answer saying, I don't know about it, I'm sorry, I, I cannot uh, help you. But to my surprise, I found a book from Mr. Botone called Talking Machines and Records that it's, it was published on 1904. So the same year that, same year, no. Uh, like uh, 10 years later than Gillette died. 
And uh, it's also a fascinating book. I have I have printed it because I don't want to 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 uh, to, to to damage it. And it will be also be included in my book, so you will be able to read both books. Okay, it's just ten years of difference. And in this book, you see the same books that were announced uh, published on on the on. On the English mechanic, the same advertisement is in his book. So without any doubt, we are talking about the same person. And well, he speaks about talking machines, how they were invented, how the first songs were recorded, And on page 40 something, he also explains very well how is the process, uh, the Edison process of the gold, gold mold. So uh, how he he um, he uh, duplicated his uh, his cylinders. And on page 40 something, 40, 40, 45, 46, 47. He starts giving recipes for wax cylinders. He says, by varying the proportions, the experimenter can produce a composition of such a degree of hardness of softness as shall be most fitted for the purpose he has in view. The first contains no lead and can be made of any des desired degree of hardness, hardness by increasing the amount of resin. Take clean resin, colophony. Here we have it. Half pound. Good paraffin wax. Like such. Also half pound. So half and half. Melt the resin carefully without burning over a clear fire and a well glazed pipkin. When melted, add the wax. Stir continuously until the, until the paraffin is entirely melted and incorporated with the resin. Okay, so I did that. And this is the result. Okay. Much harder. Okay. It doesn't break. But under heat, it's a little bit plastic, you see? So it's, it can deform under heat. And these days we have in Spain, in Madrid, like 35 degrees, and they can deform a little bit. So my next experiment, what I'm going to do is to try with different kind of, of proportions. Um, I don't know which way I want to go. If I want something that is a little bit more brittle and hard, or something that is, is more hard and less plastic. I will make some more experiments this week. I wanted to, to make them today. But life got in between, and uh, well, my dog is in the hospital. It's a long story, but uh, it will be all right. Okay, so this is the first, the first uh, recipe. Then the second one says to make the second, we shall require some lead plaster. Things here start um, getting weird. This can either be purchased from the chemist or made as follows: we mix. Half a pound of oxide lead, litharge. Okay, this is oxide of lead too. Okay, and this is not sold anymore, at least to normal people like you and me. Why? Because if you mix oxide of lead too with uh, aluminum powder, you have a bomb in your hands. It's a very powerful um, bomb. Okay, with one pound of olive oil and half a pint of water. Place this mixture in a pipkin or other suitable vessel. Um, 
gentle fire simmering, constant stirring until the water was, has evaporated. Then take this lead plaster and mix it with three ounces of resin. I assume it's um, colophony and hard soap. These are melted together, beginning with the resin, so very the last, whatever, whatever. Okay, third, a very good composition consists of burgundy pitch. Here I'm asking for your help. I have found burgundy pitch, but the price is outrageous, like uh, fifty dollars per twenty grams or twenty-five grams or thirty grams, or and indeed more than half a kilo so if you have a cheap source of burger on the pitch burger on the pitch if the is the resin of a, a kind of a pines that grow in the north like in norway and uh, in, in, the, in the north latitudes okay frankie says that i can find it's Pretty cheap, it's even sold on, on um, Amazon. Resin, I assume it's uh, colophony, yellow bee sauce, very easy to find. Olive oil in Spain, whatever you want. And water, melted together. And then uh, there's a fourth recipe it's uh, melting up carriage candles, stirring, not paraffin with about one-eighth of their weight of well-dried, finely precipitated chalk. I think it's also interesting. Maybe I will also try this one. The same as used for tooth pulp. Then there's a composition recommended by Mr. Suget that he said he have not tried, that is ozogarit. This also can be fine. It's not too difficult. It's not easy, but uh, it's, it's a sort of fossil fossilized uh, wax or mineral wax. And carnauba wax is very easy. But this is he said that it's very up to crack. So I'm not very very fan of this one. And this, the the last one that I think this is very similar to the Edison composition is stirred of lead by adding litharge, the same we saw before, to melted stearic acid, and then adding gradually this compound to a mixture equal parts of resin and paraffin wax in a multi conditions. Portions will be toasted for hardness. Okay, so. I'm not very fan of using uh, any compound of lead because uh, you know it's uh, it's very very toxic and the oxide of lead is super toxic so not very fan. So that's it. This is my mold without, uh, before finishing. Sorry, this is my mold that I'm using. One second, please. So you can see it here. It consists on a base, then an exact replica of uh, of uh, the mandrel, and then two thick shells. This is not the mold I'm selling to the customers. This is an industrial mold to make the cylinders. The mold I will make for the customer that want to buy it as an option will be an exact replica of what uh, Gillette designed. And that's it, my friends. Uh, I wanted to finish this um, this video by making a, a cylinder but uh, I just cannot because uh, I have to go to bed tomorrow I wake up very very early but after work I'm sure I will be able to make a mold and I will explain you 
how to do it, how I cover the sides with uh, this uh, tape and then I also use this kind of paper for the inside because uh, Botone also explains how to make uh, the was was the correct procedure in order to don't allow the wax to stick to the mold. So that's it. Thank you very much, and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.